Now let's look at the following example. I want to integrate 1 over x times the square root of 5 minus x squared. Um, so I know I'm going to be using trig substitution since we know this is coming from section 7.3, but what are the clues that tell us trig substitution is going to be useful? Well, I do have this difference of, of squares here under the square root, so I want to ask myself what kind of form do I have? So this is always a good way to start um, a trig sub question. So is it the x squared minus a squared, the a squared minus x squared, or the a squared plus x squared type form? Well here I do have a number squared minus a variable thing squared, so that puts us in the a squared minus x squared form. So remember that's the one where a sign substitution is going to be helpful because that's connected to our 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared identity. So here we'll want to let x be equal to a sine theta. Now notice that 5 minus x squared is my a squared minus x squared. So a is actually root 5, not 5. So I'm going to have x equals root 5 sine theta. And again, I'm thinking about theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. I won't always write this part down, but I'll go ahead and write it down this time. Then whenever I'm doing variable substitution, I'm going to have to change from my old variable, which is in terms of x, to my new variable in terms of um, theta. So I'm going to need something with a d theta instead of a dx. So I need to compute dx. So dx is going to be root 5 cosine theta d theta. Okay. So I've determined the form. I've set up the trig substitution. Now I need to plug these components into my integral. So the integral of dx over x times the square root of 5 minus x squared is equal to an integral of root 5 cosine theta d theta all over x here, which is root 5 sine theta times the square root of 5 minus x squared. So x is root 5 sine theta, so x squared should be 5 sine squared theta. Okay, so this is just from replacing our dx, our x, and our x squared with everything that we have here from our substitution. So the next step in a trig substitution is to um, look for using the identity. Okay, so we implement our substitution. So we have our setup part. We set up the trig sub. Okay. And we rewrite the integral. And now we're going to look for using the identity. And there will always be some appropriate Pythagorean identity for us to use. In this case, we're going to want to use 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. So let's look at what we have inside of our problem here. So I have this 5 minus 5 sine squared theta. There's a couple ways that I can look at doing this. I can look at factoring 5 out of each of these two terms, which would give me 5 times 1 minus sine squared theta, which I could then replace by cosine squared theta. Or I could have written this identity off to the side and multiplied it through by 5 on both sides and see that 5 minus 5 sine squared theta is going to be 5 cosine squared theta. Okay, Let me just write the other thing you could do is you could take what's under that square root. Think about factoring 5 out so you have 1 minus sine squared theta inside and then see how that's 5 cosine squared theta. So you can think about it in either one of those two ways but now we're gonna have, let's see, before I rewrite this, notice that I get a little bit of cancellation here. This root 5 and this root 5 cancel. So we've got cosine theta d theta over sine theta. And what's under this, excuse me, this square root, 5 minus 5 sine squared, is 5 cosine squared theta. Okay. So I can go ahead and apply my square root. This is where. Um, I am making use of the fact that we're in this interval. Remember I said that the square root of x squared was 
defined as the absolute value of x, which is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x if x is less than 0. Okay? But notice that if we're in this interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for our thetas, cosine is always positive in this interval because that's the positive x-axis. So this square root of 5 cosine squared theta will just be on the positive side okay because cosine theta itself would always be positive so notice that i have cosine theta d theta over sine theta root 5 cosine theta okay so now we're looking to do some simplifying here sorry this bar got a little crazy looking okay so what else can we cancel here well we see that we have a cosine theta and a cosine theta so those cancel Okay, I can pull that constant of 1 over root 5 out in front, and then I'm going to have this integral of 1 over sine. Well, notice that 1 over sine is the trig function cosecant theta. Okay, so remember that one thing I mentioned about trig substitution um, was that when we introduced this um, trig functions into our problem, we were going to be simplifying our problem down to an integral of some kind of trig function or product of trig functions, which was going to involve techniques of section 7.2. Okay, so we set up our trig sub, rewrote the integral, used the identity, we did some simplifying. Okay, to get down to here, and then you're often going to have to use 7.2 type techniques here because you're going to be dealing with the integrals of trig functions. So finding the integral of cosecant theta is one for which we have a rule. So we need to use our antiderivative rule here that we have. Remember we learned two new rules back in 7.2, the integral of secant and the integral of cosecant. So the integral of cosecant was one that had a log in it. So we have 1 over root 5 log was the absolute value of cosecant theta minus cotangent theta plus c. Okay, so it feels like we've done a lot of work, but we got to remind ourselves we're not quite done yet because the original question was asking us for an integral of something that was in terms of x. So I want to say we're not done yet. We need to get in terms of x. So how are we going to um, get this back in terms of x. When we had u substitution before and I had some kind of um, antiderivative I'd found in terms of u, well I could just look back and see what u was in terms of x. But here it's a little bit backwards, remember, because we have an inverse substitution. So here we had x was equal to root 5 sine theta. Okay, so I need to figure out what theta is in terms of x, but actually what I want to really know is what some trig functions of theta are in terms of x. And so doing this requires a little bit of right triangle trig. Notice that I have x over root 5 is equal to sine theta. So if I use my SOHCAHTOA and draw a right triangle here, okay, if I have theta here, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this would be x over root 5. And I could use my Pythagorean theorem here to get that this side down here is the square root of 5 minus x squared. Okay. So now that I have this triangle here, I can figure out what cosecant of theta is using the sides of this, this triangle here as well as cotangent of theta. So I see I'm going to have 1 over root 5 is log, now cosecant theta is just 1 over sine, so I know that that's actually root 5 over x. Cotangent theta will be 1 over tangent or adjacent over opposite. So I'm going to have the square root of 5 minus x squared over x, and that's all in absolute value, plus c. So remember what we were solving for here, this is equal to our integral of dx over x times the square root of 5 minus x squared.